Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul. Very happy to be connecting with you today. It's a Tuesday. It's noon here in Hawaii, and it is the 26th day of June, 2018. My, how time flies. And so I'm very grateful to be connected. Today we'll be talking about some wisdom from Tao Science. I'll be using the yet-to-be-released to the public Tao Science book which is written by Dr. Master Shaw and Dr. Rulin Shu, <clears throat> Dr. and Master Rulin Shu. And so I will uh, just read a couple of pages and then go into depth in some of the wisdom on those pages. Uh, and this is to kind of prepare the public for the wisdom associated with this book. So I hope uh, you all have the opportunity to stay today if not, then make sure that you like, subscribe, and you can always come back to my Facebook page and watch the uh, recordings. Okay. Also, you'll be notified when I go live in the future. At least sometimes Facebook doesn't always notify everybody. They have their own algorithms, and uh, you pretty much have to make notes. So I do go live on Tuesdays at noon Hawaii time and then three hours earlier on Thursday, 9 a.m. Hawaii time. So thank you all for coming. <clears throat> Hopefully today's topic will be valuable. Uh, let's see, we have, welcome to um, Mahanush Manasuk Singh, welcome. Welcome also, I can't see the first name, uh, Facebook makes it to where it's faded out, it's almost impossible to see, so Susan is the first time I can see that much. Welcome also to Susan Otenson. And Rachel Burton, aloha to Kristen Rojas. Thank you, Kristen, for your support. Uh, if I speak about websites or links or anything like that, keep an eye on Kristen Rojas' chat box. She po posts all those things on my behalf. Welcome uh, also to Susan Birchmore. Good to see you here again. And Don Robinson, Tanya Osborne. Welcome, Robert Dosa. Aloha, Kristen Strachan. Welcome, Dama Montez and Patty O'Donnell. <coughs> And welcome also to Mama Merritt. Welcome to Patty O'Donnell and Quincy. Great to see you here as well, Quincy. So today's subject matter I won't get into right away, but it will be very valuable. Uh, for those that care, for those that pay attention, we went into Mercury retrograde, uh, which is about uh, till the end of July, actually. So it's going to be about a month. And what that means basically is that it's time to slow down, it's time to, um, co uh, to contemplate, time to <clears throat> relax and allow things to naturally flow versus try to force things. Some of us may have, you know, hard laid plans that it has to be done by A, B, and C. And um, in Mars retrograde, <clears throat> the, um, the way things get done is by allowing versus forcing or pushing. And so that's a great opportunity uh, to grow a bit. Also, during this time, there's a possibility that things will break. Computers, electronics, cars. Um, try not to let it get you down or bother you. It's just the nature of, of rebuilding. And so if, if something like that happens, take it with a grain of salt uh, and remember this conversation and then just process through it. Um, basically, it's a time to um, realign Slow down a bit. <clears throat> so welcome also to Dan Victoria. Welcome, Bozena. Aloha also to anyone else whose name I have not mentioned. I see Patty O'Donnell strength. So thank you all for joining. And thank you also for clicking on the share button and letting other people know about today's live stream. I'm going to make a post in my groups that I am live. I'll be right back with you. I have a couple of groups that I am a member of uh, and that I teach. I'd like to let those students know <clears throat> so that they can join when they can. Okay. So let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul, placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, which is a hand mudra position, like a prayer. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. 
Let us close our eyes, fully connect, and I will invite in the beings of light. Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine Tao, the source, Dear our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, <clears throat> beloved Jesus, beloved Buddha, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Kuan Yin, dear beloved all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, the soul of all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, Mother Earth, the sun, the moon, and more, serving the planet of the light side. We love you, honor you, respect you, and I bow my head to each and every one of you. And I ask your presence at this time to assist with today's wisdom and teachings. To the soul of the book, Tao Science. <clears throat> the science and wisdom and the practice of the great of creation and grand unification. And the wisdom and teachings within. I love you. I you appreciate you. Could you please be present today? Allow me to serve your wisdom and speak your truths. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls and all universes. Love you, honor you, appreciate you. Please turn on. We invite all souls and all universes to chant love, peace, and harmony with us as we set the energy field for today's wisdom and teachings. For those that are new, this is a mantra, love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> it is also a healing instrument. You can learn more by going to lovepeaceharmony.org. And you can also download the Love, Peace, and Harmony app which has the song on it. So let us chant, let us serve. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Wo I wo shin erling, wo I tran ran lay, ung ling rong her mu shur shong, shong I ping on a she, shong I ping on a she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so thank you all for coming and welcome. Uh, welcome also to Pat. Welcome Pat JD. Welcome Christina Walker. Aloha Kathy Arnold. Welcome Larissa Wood. Also welcome Pamela. Welcome Rosetta. Welcome Roshan. Aloha Christine Young. Thank you for being a newbie and joining us. And welcome also Patty O'Donnell. Uh, anybody else's name who I've missed, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you also for hitting the share button and letting other people know about today's live stream. So today, Tao science, what is Tao science, and what is the quantum physics of Shen, Qi, and Jing? Now, I could have put how to walk on water, explained by Tao science. We probably would have 100 people watching right now. But I decided not to do that, because this is the information that can actually accomplish that. You can learn how to walk on water, how to walk through fire, how to walk through walls with this wisdom. But if I said that and a hundred people showed up, then those people would not be the right people to show up because they would only have an interest to do things that sound cool versus have an understanding of the higher and true meaning of Tao science and the purpose, power, and significance of this wisdom. Dr. and Master Shah co-wrote this book with Master Rulin. There's their images. And <clears throat> Dr. and Master Rulin is a physicist. She graduated from Berkeley, is very, very intelligent, and she wanted to understand the grand unification theory. 
which is the theory of all creation. One scientific formula that explains everything, all creation. Um, that has, has not been discovered ever until Master Shaw came along. And he heard very clearly from heaven, bring this person, Master Ulin, who was one of his students at the time, bring her along, lift her up, give her the necessary power and wisdom so that she can receive the divine knowledge on what is the grand unification theory. And what does it have to do with Shen, Qi, and Jing? What does it have to do with walking on water, walking through fire? What does it have to do with any of this? It has to do with everything. In her books, well, this one has not been released yet. This will come out in just a month or so. <clears throat> in these books, there is the highest wisdom that has been brought down to the level of you and me, the level of the layman terms, the level of those of us who would really like to bridge the gap between um, religion, which is belief-based systems, uh, spirituality-based systems, and science, which is if I can't see it, touch it, feel it, I don't believe it systems. There's a massive gap between them. And Albert Einstein, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a quote I read yesterday, said that science without religion is lame and religion without science is incomplete. And that's not exact, but it's not far from being correct. They need each other. Um, religion needs science because science can validate the things that religion, that spirituality knows to be true at a heartfelt knowing level, but no way to prove it. Science needs religion because religion carries very high level wisdoms that without them, science cannot move forward. They just get stuck. So they need each other. And that is explained quite clearly throughout both of her Tao science books. <clears throat> now this one, I'm going to go to a very specific page. Welcome Angie Taylor, welcome Tux, welcome Heather McNee, and welcome anyone else if name I have missed. This is on page 34 of this book, and the book's title is Tao Science, the Science, Wisdom, and Practice of Creation and Grand Unification. The title, how awesome is the title? The Science, Wisdom, and Practice of Creation and Grand Unification. So just a little bit more before I go to that page and work through a couple of pages with you. <clears throat> Master Lin is a physicist. She understands how to explain three, uh, string theory, quantum theory, wave theory. I can barely remember to say those words, let alone explain them, unless I read them, and then it's easy for me to explain them. And she understands those things that most of us twist our brain and we go, oh? Master Shah understands none of that. None. He didn't take a physics class. <clears throat> he receives his information directly from heaven. And in the previous book, he received a, a um, formula. Now, Einstein, everybody knows him for his formula. E plus mc squared equals, you know, whatever it is. Obviously, I don't even know what I'm talking about because that's not correct. But you know what I'm talking about. And that's a formula. What are formulas for? Well, in science, they help you explain things logically so that uh, it can be tracked down. It validates. Scientifically, it validates. No one can disprove it, right? That's what a formula is. And grand unification is the theory of all life. Now, Master Shah, as you know, talks about soul, heart, mind, energy, matter. He talks about how you can heal the soul first and the mind and body follows. And it gives many, many very valuable one-sentence secrets that help us transform every aspect of our life. Those that have applied his wisdoms can transform their life and have transformed their lives. There are those that have received <clears throat> miracle healing blessings from Master Shah from his uh, master teachers and even from the Tao hands healers and their lives have been changed uh, irreparably they're just <clears throat> it's it's hard to explain when a miracle healing occurs how it works they're that falling on the side of spirituality science will look at it with one eyebrow up going how is that possible it can't be explained well that's the beauty of a of a scientific formula it can explain how somebody can receive a miracle healing. 
That's what's in separating spirituality and science, explanation. And so in this book, it goes into far greater depths on that. And it goes into a scientific explanation of what is Shen, Qi, and Jing. So it'll be a little bit, make you, it'll make you think, but bear with me as I read it with you and for you. And let's see if we can't bridge the gap. Because you probably have people in your life that are very mental. Very, if you can't prove it to me, I'm not interested. Right? This is perfect for them. They will love this wisdom, this video, and this book. And they don't have to wait for this book. Buy the one before it. It's also called Tao Science. And they will get huge value out of it. So let's go into this. I'm on page 35 right now. <clears throat> and everyone and everything. This is a one-sentence secret and a one-sentence truth. Everyone and everything are made up of information, energy, and matter. Information, energy, and matter. This is a scientific explanation. <clears throat> Master Shah would say everyone and everything is made up of Jing, Qi, and Shen, or Shen, Qi, and Jing. Same thing. Shen is a word that represents soul, heart, mind. Soul is the carrier of information. Hence, information, energy, and matter. Shen, Qi, Jing. What is Qi? Qi is energy. Tai Chi, Qigong. Everyone has heard that before. So what is Tai Chi? Tai Chi is movement of energy. What is Qigong? Energy practice. Literal translation, Qigong, energy practice. And so Shen, Qi, and Jing, scientifically speaking, are information, energy, and matter. Which is first? Information leads the energy. Energy leads the matter. People do not understand that something is the precursor to the movement of energy. Information moves energy. The soul carries information. Everybody watching today has heard of the Akashic Record. <clears throat> the Akashic Record is the carrier of information. Well, where is the Akashic Record? Well, it's in the Hall of the Akasha. Well, it's also literally embedded in your soul. Your soul is the digital version, if you will, of the Akashic Record. If your soul is extinguished, the Akashic Record is extinguished because it is based on your soul. So your soul carries all information. Everything, 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 everything has a soul. The chair you're sitting on has a soul. The plastic that it's made of has a soul. The energy and matter of the plastic has a soul. All energy and matter carries consciousness and information. All energy and matter is information from source creator. Source creator created everything. All energy, all matter, all the space in between the energy and matter that is made up of energy and matter. And it carries consciousness of creator. It carries information. So now science can validate that. Let's go further. Quantum physics is the science that currently reveals at the deepest level what everyone and everything are made of and how they behave. How they behave is important. Because science looks at how things behave. Does it move here? Does it move there? Does it blink on? Does it blink off? What is it doing? This is how science looks at things. <clears throat> what can quantum physics tell us about soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter? The quantum world, the science world, is intriguing, magical, and empowering. We will also see how the law, it's a law, the law of Shen, Qi, and Jing can shed light on some challenging problems in quantum physics. New paragraph. Imagine now that you are a quantum physicist. Imagine that you are a brilliant scientist. You have a powerful microscope in front of you. And you're going to use it to see things smaller and smaller and smaller. You're going to use it to find out what everyone and everything is made up of at the smallest scale. So you look at your body under your microscope and you find that although different parts of your body look different, 
they are essentially the same in the sense that they are all made up of cells. You, well, this liver's made up of cells, brain's made up of cells. They look a little bit different, but you can definitely tell they're all cells. Now you adjust your microscope and you go down even more and you look at the cells and you find that although there are many kinds of cells, all the cells are made up of molecules. Huh. Things are starting to become more uniform, not so different. Now you adjust your microscope and you look even further at the molecules and you find that they are made up of all kinds of atoms. Ooh, these atoms look different, right? You've seen the atoms in the science classes, the little balls with the lines that connect them, right? <clears throat> and now you adjust your microscope even further and you look at the atoms. And although there are many different kinds of atoms, all the atoms are made up of nucleus and electrons. You say, wow, how interesting. No matter where I look at the brain or the liver or if I look at the lungs or if I look at the heart, they're still made up of the same thing, electrons and neutrons. And now, because your microscope is so powerful, you adjust it to look at the nucleus. You find that the nucleus is made of protons and neutrons. Wow. Particle physicists, which is different than quantum physicists, <clears throat> particle physicists study the nucleus by using an accelerator, a machine, to produce particles with very high energy. And then they bombard the nucleus and see how it reacts because they want to see how things react. The way things react, tell them about what its function is. This is how they know things are happening in space. They see some stars going in a certain direction. And they say, what makes them move in a certain direction? Something must be in the middle pulling them in that direction. So science looks at why things move the way they do, what causes them to do what they do. <clears throat> From the bombing of the protons, they study, and through long and difficult experiments and mathematical deductions, there's a math word again, they found that protons and neutrons are made up of quarks and gluons. Oh, man, my brain starts to hurt. Quarks and gluons? Oh, what the heck is this stuff? I don't need to know this stuff, right? Well, the scientist does. All you want to know is, does God exist? All we want to know on the spiritual level is, how do I get home and how do I stop my suffering, right? That's what we want to know. How can I make life easy and stop the suffering, get back home and hang out with the angels? But scientists are very, very often not very connected to the divine, the Tao and the source. They are not connected to the heart, to God, to love. Not all of them, but certainly their share of them. And so they look at these things. Why, why, why? So we're getting to the connection. Hang in there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you look at quarks, electrons, gluons, and photons, and you find that they seem to be complete. You cannot break them down anymore. They are the basic building blocks for our world. Quantum physicists call them elementary particles. And to your amazement, although these elementary particles, <clears throat> they have energy about them, they have a charge, an electrical charge about them, they have rotation, they spin, and they even have something that's measurable called mass. They don't behave, they don't behave like particles at all. A particle is like a piece of sand, right? It behaves like a particle, it behaves like a piece of sand. But these don't behave like that. They look down at them and they can see what they're doing. They're glowing, they're energetic, they're, they have shape and they have mass. But they're not behaving like what they're supposed to. Because science says they're supposed to behave this way from everything that we know. <clears throat> to your amazement, they behave like a wave. A wave? What's a wave? Think of the ocean wave. A wave is also known as a vibration. A wave is a periodic oscillation. Another way of looking at it is from time to time it goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. That's a periodic oscillation. 
So these particles that are supposed to sit there like a piece of sand are not doing that. They're going zzz, 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 and science just are scratching their head. They're going, it doesn't make sense based on everything we know. Waves is characterized by wavelength and frequency and amplitude. Don't worry, we'll explain. Wavelength is the distance between successive crests. The top of a wave, right? Think of the top of a wave, and it goes back down, and then back behind it. If you look back behind it, there's another wave, and the top of that wave. So that is a crest to crest. So this is, they have to measure it. Science is all about measuring, remember. And the measurement of from here to here, top to top, and then top to the bottom of the wave, and how fast and how slow it's moving, they measure all that. Because that helps them understand things like what is Shen, Qi, and Jing. It helps them understand why can Master Sha or one of his teachers offer a blessing and a miracle occurs. Science just scratch their heads. But if they can validate it with a formula like what we're getting to now, oh, well, that changes everything. So hang in there. Wavelength is the distance between successive crests of a wave. It is the distance between two adjacent waves. Frequency is the number of occurrences of the repeating of this wave. Does the wave go dong, 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 dong? How often does it repeat? The number of repeats is what's called the frequency. Make sense? All of these are measurement tools that are very necessary. And they measure per second. Frequency measures how quickly a wave oscillates. Period measures the time frame. It measures a wave to oscillate for one complete cycle. Amplitude measures the height <clears throat> that a wave is constantly moving. So when a wave moves, it carries, this is very important, very important, stick with me, I know it's a little heady. So the measurements, okay, you don't have to put too much brain power into them. Science needs to know how far apart is it, how tall is it, how fast is it moving between each other, in a period of time and that tells them <clears throat> the frequency of the wave amplitude measures the height a wave that constantly moves. when a wave moves this is the most important part when a wave moves it carries matter energy and wait for it it carries information So down at the smallest energy matter particles, neutron, protons, the smallest energy microscope, when you look at a human body, it is moving in a wave. And it is moving in a very specific frequency. And that frequency is very specific to you and to me. Your frequency is specific to your information, what your soul carries with it. From lifetime to lifetime my soul carries different information from lifetime to lifetime therefore I operate at a slightly different frequency than you so now if all we can accomplish is to get science to recognize that all energy all matter all everything can be seen as oscillating vibrating like a wave and they already know that wave carries information science has no problem with the wave carrying information they know that if we can get them to buy into this then they can start to understand oh so when somebody sends a healing blessing then they're sending a wave frequency that adjusts the imbalanced wave frequency of that person and it changes that wave frequency to one that is more in balance and therefore their health returns. If you can get a scientist to understand that, they go, oh, I get it. Let's sit on a beautiful beach in Hawaii and watch the ocean waves. You can jump into the ocean and let the waves carry you up and down. You can surf the waves. You can let the waves move you forward. You can simply watch the waves and the surfers, seeing the excitement and the exhilaration. You can do all the above. You can observe 
the waves very closely. Unlike something that doesn't move a stationary object, waves never stay still in one location. They don't sit in a box and go back and forth inside of a box. The universe is not boxed in. Waves are in constant motion. What does Master Shah teach? The universe is a circle, but the circle has no edge or boundary. From one becomes two. Two is heaven and mother earth. From heaven and mother earth, all things are created, including human beings. All things are created. And that's called creation. And that's half of the circle. The other half of the circle is called reverse creation, where all things that are created go through a process of evolution of remembering what we came from and returning back to that source through awakening. <clears throat> so this all comes together in the oneness comprehension. The ocean waves oscillate just like an energy wave going up and down. They travel, they splash on the shore, they move from place to place, they exist in the whole ocean in the same way that quantum waves exist in all time. But there is a difference. There is a very important difference. Now look at the ocean waves more closely you find that there are all kinds of waves in the ocean. There are long waves, there are short waves, there are tall waves, there are low waves. Like the ocean, everyone and everything does not usually contain only one wave. They contain many waves. So you and I are made up of many different frequencies, many different oscillations. The universe is made up of many different frequencies, many different oscillations. Everyone and everything is basically, here it is, Everyone and everything, everything and you, is basically a vibrational energy field containing many kinds of waves, kind of like an ocean. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> a quantum wave, which is what you are made up of, differs from an ocean wave in two ways. An ocean wave is carried by ocean water. A quantum wave, which is what you are made up of, does not need a medium like ocean water to carry it. A quantum wave exists because it exists. It exists on its own. Quantum waves are the fundamental building blocks of everyone and everything. Everything. Creator is pure energy pure highest frequency and everything that came from creator carries those quantum waves so to speak every vibrational field carries information does a pebble of sand carry information what do you think well you know the sand doesn't talk what's it going to tell me it can't possibly carry information it does it carries the consciousness of creator in it. Might not be a very high consciousness, but we don't know. Maybe that's a judgment. Maybe it has a much higher consciousness than you or me because it hasn't been adulterated. Maybe the pebble of sand has a consciousness that is higher because it hasn't been told, you're low, you're no good, you're this, you're that. That's what we're told. So why couldn't it have a higher consciousness than us? It hasn't been propped down yet by human consciousness every vibrational field carries information it carries energy it carries matter the energy and the momentum carried by a quantum wave relates to its frequency and its wavelength so the the amount of energy depends on how frequent does it happen and how long is that wave? The amount of energy depends on how frequent does it happen and how long is that wave. Mass, the size of something, is a measurement of how much resistance or inertia is created in that movement. You and I have a lot of mass. We have a lot of inertia, a lot of resistance, okay? Because our wave frequency our uh, oscillation is not as fast as God. It's not as fast as Jesus. Our wave frequency and oscillation 
our information is not as pure. Theirs is very pure, therefore it's a very high, pure frequency. Ours is very impeded, impacted, because of the information that carries with our soul. Our soul carries the information of all lifetimes. Some good stuff, some not so good stuff. Our karma creates inertia. It creates blockages on our path. So I'm interchanging now Master Shah verbiage, blockages, and science verbiage called inertia and mass. We are an energetic field moving through all energetic fields. Think of everything like these bunch of wave fields, like millions and millions of waves, and we're in the middle of it, and our mass and our wave is going much slower than the higher frequencies of God, Tao, and Source. Therefore, we have inertia. We have blockages. So why then does soul healing work? Why then does Tao healing work? Why do these special calligraphies Master Shah puts in his books work? Why? This is the $1.98 question that needs to be answered by science here and now. It works because Master Shah was born into humanity as a human being and slowly received <clears throat> higher frequencies through Tao Qi Gong, through Tai Chi, through training with masters, through going through enlightenment practices and processes, through connecting directly to source, through receiving blessings and enlightenments from source by being a service to others. His frequency included the elevation of his own waveform to higher and higher waveforms, matching higher and higher layers of our creator, divine down source. Certainly he is not God. He is not Jesus. He is not Buddha. But they all did the same things. They cleared their blockages. They cleared their karmas. They were of extended service to humanity on a very, very high level. And accordingly, their frequencies, their wavelength increased their inertia and mass became less and less. The information that came with their soul became less encumbered by negative karma and moved towards positive uh, energies and frequencies. Therefore, their, uh, 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 their informational field became much, much faster. Their frequency happened more often. Their wavelength and their frequency became much more pure. They moved up in the field of frequencies, so to speak. Their continued service to us here in this frequency that we call third dimension, that's what we call it. What is third dimension? What is fourth, fifth, sixth dimension? They are frequencies. They are wavelengths in the entirety of all of creation. We as a collectiveness live as a collective whole in a frequency range where we can only see what we see. Why can't we see angels? Why can't we see God, Buddha, Jesus right in front of us right now? Because our collective frequency and our individual frequency is insufficient to match to those frequencies. That's why these beings of light come to serve. That is why they got where they're at. They serve unconditionally. That service brings good positive karma to their energetic field, their informational field, and therefore they maintain a high frequency and possibly move up in that frequency. So, in a nutshell, what is Tao science? What is the quantum physics of Jing Qi Shen, of Shen Qi Jing? It is the bridging of the gap of the wisdom and the information of all spirituality and the wisdom and information of science. And it explains that the soul is the carrier of information and that information and energy and matter are one. And if one can recognize on the scientific side that soul and information are the same, and the reason things happen to a person and the reason people have problems and the reason people get healed is because of the change of that information. 
If they recognize the change of that information occurs because of positive efforts, positive movements, positive activity, release of negativity, release of negative mindsets, negative attitudes, and negative beliefs. If they recognize that information can be changed by positive effort, positive momentum, they can then see that the informational field changes in its vibrational frequency. They can then validate that that positive change and in informational vibrational frequency positively affects health, wealth, finances, positively affects relationship, positively affects a person's future. Their frequency goes to a higher level and they have less problems because the informational field is no longer inhibited by the inertia and the mass of negative karma or negativity. Okay? <clears throat> so that's everything in a nutshell. Thank you, heaven, for borrowing my mouth to deliver that because trust me when I tell you, I read this yesterday one time and tried to grasp it but didn't really grasp it the way I've explained it today. So heaven borrowed my mouth and explained it for me. Thank you, heaven. <clears throat> I encourage all of you to bookmark this recording. This is really valuable wisdom for all those that are very mental, all those that have a hard time understanding why soul healing works, why Tao healing works. This has a very clear explanation as to how someone can open their heart to faith healing, energy healing, soul healing, all forms of healing from the level of energy follow this exact same pattern. They are simply bringing in positivity and reversing the mass and the inertia that is caused by negative energy. Very simple, very reproducible wisdom. So that's the best I can do in this explanation. Um, I am by no stretch of the imagination uh, anywhere close to understanding this Tao wisdom, uh, science wisdom, the way Master Lin and Master Shah comprehend it. But I do have a pretty good grip on the soul healing. I do have a pretty good grip on those two pages that I read. And I hope I've been able to explain them to you well. Now, how do we move ourselves forward? Well, you apply this. In this same book is this calligraphy. So what does this have to do with it? Now, this is going to be very interesting for that person in your life that has, um, they're in need of proof, right? They need proof. Okay, I can comprehend this, but can you prove it to me that soul healing works? So yes, actually we can. All you got to do is do a practice that we'll recommend. What kind of practice do I need? Well, I want you to trace the calligraphy with your fingers. Pfft, are you kidding me? I'm a scientist. You're telling me I got to put my fingers together like this, all five fingers, and follow a diagram and do it for how long? Well, you know, do it for a half hour. You want to prove it to them, tell them do it for a half hour, okay? And then you're telling me if I do this for a half hour that I will see a change. Yes, that's what we're telling you. Now they're going to ask you, how does it work scientifically? How is that possible scientifically? Here's the answer. Heaven, Tao, Source, Creator exists. Everything came from them. There are all layers of information, all layers of frequencies, all the way down to where we're at and below. And all of that information, all of those higher frequencies, can be uh, infused upon lower frequency things. Higher frequencies can be infused upon lower frequency things. They do it right now, all the time. Uh, uh, um, they infuse higher frequencies into water. People will drink water and it actually heals them because the healing frequency is in it. They, 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 they will put metal, round metal objects or discs into a room, infuse higher frequencies into it, and then you wear it around your neck and it puts out a frequency field that helps people. They put it on their wrist, copper bands, and people have less arthritis. It's the same thing. It's a frequency put into that metal that then offsets the lower the negative frequency of arthritis. It's this simple. It's not like science can't comprehend that. But what's happened with a calligraphy is that higher frequencies have been infused into this writing, into this calligraphy, into this ink, higher frequencies have been infused into them. 
And how do you get it from this piece of paper into you? You trace it. That's how you explain it to the scientist. And I say, okay, I'm a prove it, prove it to me kind of person. Let's do this. Now, if you're trying to convince somebody that is not easily convincible, then you need to have them choose physical pain. Physical pain, okay? Don't have them choose an emotion or something that's intangible, that's, you know, mushy, measurable pain. If they don't have pain, give them pain. <laughs> Hit them in the arm or something. Give them a headache. Just kidding. Don't do that. <clears throat> but tell them don't use it until they do have pain. Don't try the calligraphy until they do have something measurable. At least a 5 on a 10 scale. You want it to where they cannot deny it. Okay? And then you ask them to hold the calligraphy up. And you guide them to connect to the positive energies in the calligraphy. They have to connect to the positive energies. And you tell them, do it like this. Dear the soul, <clears throat> dear the frequency of all of the information and positive information and positive frequency in this calligraphy. I would like to receive a blessing of your positive information and positive frequency upon my negative information and negative frequency that is causing this pain. Can you please do that for me? You have to give them these, this basic sentence structure because they're not going to be interested in dear the soul of and please forgive me and all the things that Master Shah teaches. That's too spiritual for the mental-minded scientific mind. Do it like that. Dear the uh, uh, information and positive energy in this, in this uh, calligraphy, can you please positively impact the negative information and negative frequency that's causing my pain? Enough. Okay? And then tell them to put all five fingers together and then on top of the paper or, or close to the paper, follow the lines. Follow the lines, okay? And they will follow the lines and it doesn't necessarily matter if they get them wrong. They'll, they'll figure it out. Their, their soul will actually guide them the right directions. And tell them to do it 30 minutes. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, no shortcuts. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. No shortcuts, okay? And uh, to make sure they measure it in advance. Make sure they measure their pain. If they, have, does, if they turn a certain way, is it more pain, less pain? Make sure. And then at the end, have them check again. Now, I would bet a $100 bill that they will have a measurable difference. Measurable meaning, you know, science, they measure it by, <laughs> science is very inaccurate, in my opinion. They'll say, well, um, reasonable change. Medium change, little change. They're like, you know, they're afraid to use actual numbers because they're afraid somebody might call them on. But make them give them a number. It's a five. What's it now? Well, I really don't want to admit it, but it's a zero. I don't know how that's possible. No, then they'll go through their process. How is that possible? Oh, and they'll pick up the book and start reading it again. Good. You've converted somebody who is distant from God and comprehension and awakening and a heartfelt center and somebody who doesn't trust in the divine, somebody who doesn't have uh, 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 trust in you or your path or what you're trying to accomplish, you can give this wisdom to anybody that challenges you and questions you. This is perfect for them because it proves itself. So how do you get this calligraphy? It's in this book and it's also in the previous Tao Science book. It's called Shen Qi Jing He Yi. We've been talking about Shen Qi Jing this whole time. Information, energy, and matter becomes one. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one in Master Shah's teaching. What does that mean? It becomes one. That means that whatever the frequency of this blessing in this calligraphy, their frequency rises up to become one with it. That's what that means. So when you trace the calligraphy, or they trace the calligraphy, their frequency will rise up to become one with it. That's why I'm asking you to have them do it at least a half hour because you don't want them having any room for naysaying, right? So give them this wisdom. Pass on this, this, this live stream. When this completes, takes about now 30 seconds to a minute for Facebook to make it alive. Right-click on the video itself. It will reveal the web link, the URL. Share it to anybody that you care about in an email. Challenge them. Um, there's so many different ways that you can wake people up. Share it with your husband that, that thinks you're Lulu, right? 
<laughs> share it with those people that you want to have a good relationship with, but they kind of are not necessarily sure about you because you have grown and they have not, and that's created a distance between you. This is very commonplace for those on a spiritual journey. This should solve that problem. Okay. So I want to thank everybody who has joined. <clears throat> I'm very grateful for your presence. I haven't had a chance to acknowledge all of you, but I'm very grateful. <clears throat> if you came in late, watch from the beginning. Good stuff here. I will complete by offering our gratitude to all of the beings of light who have come to offer their service today. I thank the Divine Tao Source. I thank the Tao Science Committee. I thank Master Rulin, Master Shah, all of the beings of light who have offered their service today. I thank them for borrowing my mouth and allowing me to serve you. I encourage all of those of you that you're still kind of scratching your head to watch it again and again. You will get deeper layers each and every time. There's good stuff in here. Learn more. Pick up some of Dr. Master Shah's books. Pick up some of these books. Um, trace the calligraphies, contact master teachers like myself or other healers. We can do soul healing blessings. There's no need to suffer. Higher frequencies can transform your lower frequencies pretty fast. Might cost you a little money if you contact a, a teacher like myself or other uh, uh, teachers that or other uh, students that have these healing abilities. But why suffer, right? When these things exist, why would you possibly want to suffer? Spend a little money, fix it. Very simple. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday.